How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. John here again. This time, taking a look at 19.7, free energy and the equilibrium constant. Finally, we will unite the two of them. All right, our objectives are as follows. Um, we want to calculate the change in free energy at non-standard conditions, as well as relate KEQ to standard free energy. So we're going to have this equation, which I will explain later. So that's the equation that we're going to start to use. Uh, and that, yeah, so let's do it. All right, spoiler alert, new equations. We got this one, delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. What does all that mean? Well, we'll get into that, but also know that you can rearrange this. So this is when we're at equilibrium, delta G has become zero and we can rearrange it to solve for delta G naught. So at equilibrium, it's just this equation rearranged. Uh, which we can even rearrange more to solve for KEQ. So we get KEQ by itself, and this is the equation we end up with. Again, it's just from the first one, but we're deriving it, so we'll get into that. What we've been looking at, we've been looking at delta G at standard conditions. So concentrations would have to be one molar, and pressure would have to be one atmosphere. Those are our standard conditions. Well, what about reactions that aren't occurring at standard conditions, where we got different concentration or different pressure? Enter this equation, delta G equals delta G naught. That's what this thing is. It's naught, delta G naught, plus RT ln of Q. So remember, delta G is just going to be the delta G at non-standard conditions. The delta G naught is at standard conditions. R is that constant that we've used so many times, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And T is going to be temperature. Again, make sure that it is in the absolute scale, the Kelvin scale. We need to use Kelvin. And Q is that reaction quotient. It's basically KQ with the values plugged in, not necessarily at equilibrium. So this is just here, our initial conditions. Plug them into the KQ expression. What number do you get? That's Q. Cool. So example problem. What is the delta G for the following reaction at 298 Kelvin given N2 equals 1 atmosphere, H2 equals 2.5, and NH3 equals 0.75 atmospheres, and the delta G naught is minus 33.3 kilojoules. And that's the equation. This one's pretty easy, right? We got this equation. They're asking for the delta G. They give us the delta G naught. R is a constant, so we got it. They give us T, so we have that. And now we just got to figure out, well, what's going on with this Q? So i got to figure out the KEQ expression. So Q is going to equal the pressure of the products, which we got NH3, so the pressure of NH3. And it is going to have to be squared because of that coefficient of 2, so squared, all over the reactants. So i got the pressure of N2 uh, times by the pressure of H2, which is going to have to get cubed because of the 3 right there. So why don't I go ahead and plug in those numbers for Q, and I'll tell you what I get. So I'm going to get, I have it written down somewhere, because I'm going to goof it up, and I don't want to goof it up. 0.75 squared all over 1.0 times 2.5 cubed. And when I plug and chug that, I get a number. At 0 0.036 as my Q, right? So why don't I plug that back in now? So I get delta G equals delta G naught, which is given right here. So negative 33.3 kilojoules plus R, which I have to use 0 0.008314 because that is for kilojoules per mole. Kelvin. Remember, it's 8.314, but that is in terms of joules per mole Kelvin. So I got to divide that by 1,000. And I get 0 0.008314. And then I'm going to have to times that by T, which they tell me is 298 Kelvin. So 298 Kelvin times LN of that Q, which I figured was 0 0.036. Now I just plug and chug everything into my calculator and try not to press the wrong buttons. And I have an answer here. I get here. All right. This whole thing, I got to be equal to 
negative 8.24 kilojoules. So when I plug it in, I get negative 33.3 kilojoules plus a negative 8.24 kilojoules, which gives me a final answer of, drum roll, 41.5 kilojoules. Yeah, so I hope you didn't find that too painful. I, I don't think it's so bad. Just kind of a lot of numbers. Plug in the equation, get an answer. All right, so this equation, some more things. You can also rearrange this for different conditions. Let's say we wanted to solve for delta G naught and we were given the KEQ. Well, if it's the KEQ, that tells me at equilibrium, delta G is zero. So I have zero here and I can now rearrange things to solve for delta G naught. So I, you know, subtract RT, ln of KEQ, and that, that's how I get this equation. So, <laughs> yeah, algebra. All right. So I'll solve for KEQ given delta G naught. All right, that's a little different. I can rearrange this equation now to solve for KEQ. How do I do that? Well, first I got to get rid of the negative RT. So I divide negative RT onto the other side. And now I got to get rid of this ln. How do I get rid of the natural log? introduce my friend E. So I put the other side to E and I got E to the negative delta G over RT equals KQ. So that's how we get these two equations and it's helpful to know how to get them because you won't always be given those equations. Uh, so if you can just remember one equation and have the skills to rearrange things then you're set. You know the other two. You're good to go. All right whoops. So calculate the KQ for the Haber process given the delta G naught is negative 33.3 kilojoules per mole at 298 Kelvin. So I also wrote this down for me somewhere, I think. All right, so I get, nope, I get my delta G and it equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q, right? And it's saying at equilibrium, so this becomes zero equals del, nope, delta G naught plus RT ln of KEQ, because if I'm at equilibrium, the Q is the KEQ. And now what do they ask me to solve for? KEQ. So now I got to get rid of some things. I put negative delta G over to the other side. I divide by RT and I'm left with just the ln of KEQ. So I put E to the de negative delta G over RT equals my KEQ. And now I'm going to have to plug that in. So it's E to the negative delta G, so a positive 33.3 kilojoules per mole, which is given to me in the problem, over RT. Now remember that R, those units have to agree. So I'm going to use 0.008314 so that it is now in terms of kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And then I times it by the temperature in Kelvin, which is 298. And hey, wouldn't you know it, all of my units cancel out. And I'm left with no units, just like KQ is supposed to be. So now I take out my handy dandy calculator and I push some buttons. Beep, bop, beep, bop, boop. And I get 6.87 times 10 to the fifth as my answer. So that's my KQ. There you go. That's it right there. All right, so to summarize, delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. You can get some other equations like this one or that one. If you plug in things for equilibrium and you rearrange them, that's all it is. All right? You need to know what each symbol stands for, and you need to know when to use each form of the equation. That's, that's it, okay? It's a little more math, a little more algebra. That's, that's all it really is. So I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in class. Bring questions. K-pie.